Hello, Eorzeans! I'm Lukiel Bravestone, and welcome to another episode of Remnants of a Realm. Last episode, we looked at Camp Drybone, the Golden and Silver Bazaar, Mithril Pit, T8, and Seamless Soaps. Just want to let you all know that Chronicles of a Realm has officially started production, and I'll soon be able to give you all an estimated release date. Oh! And The Fallen Rise of Final Fantasy XIV Episode VI is finally en route and should be ready by... mid-May. Please look forward to it. Also, a quick reminder about our podcast artwork thing. You can find more information on our website, speakersxiv.com. Okay, enough of that, let's get into the episode. We're traveling to Curthus and Falcon's Nest. Falcon's Nest was located in the far south of Curthus' western highlands. It was a planned hamlet defense location and was one of many that never saw any use. The hamlet was very difficult to reach, forcing you to face numerous level 70 monsters. This was not a place you'd want to go alone. This hamlet is better known as the hamlet that had the infamous Shepherd's Guild icon on one of the buildings. As we briefly mentioned in episode 6, the Shepherd was an intended class to be put into the game, but these plans were abandoned when the game started to fail and the devs had bigger issues to deal with. The building also had a fenced-in area, clearly meant to hold animals, probably sheep, that the Shepherd could use for gathering. A few yarms away from the Shepherd's Guild building was a leatherworking guild building with a nice tanning field behind it. And across from that building, you'd find an armorer's guild building. In the middle of the hamlet was this tall tower. It had nothing going on inside or around it, but I suppose we'll never know what it was intended for. Probably just set dressing, but hey, one can dream of a bigger purpose. Today, Falcon's Nest looks incredibly different. No longer a hidden, forgotten, hard to reach hamlet, Falcon's Nest looks impressive boasting its own etherite, vendors, mender, quest NPCs, as well as being a very important area in Heavensward's main scenario. One of the major differences is obviously the snow, but the second biggest difference is... Uh, everything else. It now looks more like a fortress, with everything built into one massive structure. I looked and looked, but couldn't find anything even closely resembling the 1.0 version of Falcon's Nest, which makes sense, as after restoration works began on Falcon's Nest, everything that used to be in the old hamlet was demolished and buried under the snow. Falcon's Nest has transitioned from being a dull hamlet to a massive fortress, ever-growing, evident by the numerous scaffoldings around the fortress. The new and improved Falcon's Nest also has a nice little tavern that, well, let's just say, be careful what you order in here. And as if this area hasn't grown big and impressive enough, it also has a direct airship connection with Ishgard to the far south. Proud of you, Falcon's Nest. You turned out alright. Let's get back to 1.0. Seeing as Falcon's Nest did not have an Aetherite in 1.0, you had to teleport to an Aetherite camp close by. And that happened to be Camp Riversmeet. Camp Riversmeet was close to the middle of Western Curthus, west of Gargoyle Crossing and south of Dusk Vigil. It had ethereal gates leading to Twin Pools, the Lands, and Worm King's Perch. The camp served as the only Aetherite camp in Curthus' western highlands and was naturally equipped with an Aetherite, Menders, and Vendors. The camp got its name from the rivers nearby, Curthus River and Swift Run River, meeting and merging into one before falling into the abyss in Great Tail Falls. The nearby Gargoyle Crossing is one of two identical bridges, the other one being Griffin Crossing. You might have heard of it before. It's where the first Gilgamesh fight takes place in 2.0. In 1.0 though, these served as standard loading tunnels and didn't exactly look breathtaking, and it would certainly not be able to fit a full Gilgamesh fight on it, that's for sure. River's Meat was also located very close to a cliff, and if you peeked over the mountain to the north, you could see the spires of Ishgard. Very cool. Unlike Falcon's Nest, Riversmeet did not survive the Calamity. After the Calamity struck Eorzea, the ethereal balance in Curthus went all bonkers and caused an endless winter all over the region. Poor Camp Riversmeet was busy staving off the Dravanians when it all happened. The temperatures fell, and the Aetherite was unable to deal with this sudden change in temperature and ethereal imbalance, causing it to explode and freeze mid-explosion. Jagged, frozen crystal formations now cover the Aetherite as it stands as a monument of the times past. 
it is actually the only remaining full-scale 1.0 etherite still more or less fully visible in the game. A true relic from the 6th Astral Era. The camp was, as mentioned earlier, also in the midst of a Dravanian attack at the time and cannons and tents have popped up around the camp. The camp is now entirely overrun by monsters and is no longer a sanctuary. Another testament to how unexpected this sudden cold was can be seen by looking at the banners at the camp entrances. <laughs> They're all frozen in place, almost horizontally. This is a very cold place. Brrr. When it comes to the other areas around Camp Riversmeet, there were naturally massive changes as well. As the aggressive cold and snow engulfed Curthus, the waters of Twin Pools and Swift Run River started creeping over the Gargoyle Crossing, eventually causing it to collapse in a massive mix of ice and snow. That area later became known as Snow Cloak. The two rivers, Swift Run River and Curthus River, is still there and is still pretty much intact except for that whole ice thing and causing Gargoyle Crossing to collapse and become a dungeon. Uh, and they still flow out through Gay... Gay Tail. <laughs> uh, of course. And they still flow out through Gray Tail Falls. The ethereal gate locations for Rivers Meet are mostly gone. Twin Pools is still a location, and it still consists of two pools. But the Lands and Worm King's Perch is gone, presumably covered by the snow, and forgotten. I'm freezing. Let's go back in time to a more temperate climate, to 1.0, and look at the last curse in Hamlet from 1.0. Owl's Nest. This location was the most popular of the two Hamlets back in the day, mostly because it was a location for several side quests in the game. The first thing that struck you as you entered Owl's Nest was these stacks of hay. Unsurprisingly, this Hamlet had two guild houses, one for Culinarian and one for Weaver. What's also striking about this hamlet is that it's not a clear copy-paste of Falcon's Nest. Its layout is different, the houses stretched back even further, some even down a small hill, and the central structure was a windmill. Now there was one very odd thing happening in this area, and it puzzled a lot of people. This Lalafell kept blowing on this horn. <laughs> Now, it could be one of two things. It could be teasing the feature that never came to Owl's Nest, Hamlet Defense, seeing as the fanfare he's playing is the same as the one being played when a Hamlet Defense was initiated in the other Hamlets. But it could also be a planned, pure bard, as the popular belief was at the time, seeing as he just keeps blowing the horn and seems to be having a pretty good time doing it. He's just jamming along with his horn. After the Calamity, Owl's Nest. Actually, it's a bit weird. It became a location in Frontline's Field of Glory, Shatter. There really isn't much that has changed with this place except for the incredible decay and the huge amounts of snow. Sadly, this area is only accessible through PvP, so if you want to gawk at some true Curthern ruins, you're gonna have to kill some players while doing it. Also worth mentioning that Camp Glory also appears in this map, with the sad remnants of that camp, and yes, even with a blown out Aetherite Crystal. It seems the elements were not kind to this camp, more so than Riversmeet. Just look at how these etherite exploded. The tents are all blown open and skewed, and the fences are mostly broken and gone. This is basically a big chunk of Eastern Curthus placed in a PvP map. This blew my mind when I found out, and maybe I blew a few right now too. Anyways, Owl's Nest is now but a few sad ruins scattered around a frontline PvP map. Rest in Paisa. Sweet Onion Prince. Now for our last part, the Aetherites! If you watched the second Fallen Rise episode, you are familiar with the Anima system, so we're not going to go into detail about that here, link is in the description if you haven't seen that episode. Come back here when you've watched it. In that video I briefly mentioned that in 1.0 there were more Aetherites than a Realm Reborn in Heavensward, and that is correct if you count the Ethereal Gates as well. In 1.0 there was actually an achievement you could obtain if you attuned to every single etherite and ethereal gate in the game. The title? Wanderer's Shadow. This was one of the greatest achievements you could obtain in the game, seeing as some ethereal gates were located in really inhospitable areas with extremely high level mobs patrolling the areas. We're talking about mobs all the way up to level 90. So how many etherites and ethereal gates did you have to attune to? Take a guess. 
Okay. Here's the answer. 87. That's 87 attunements, folks. This was one bitch to complete, and one could argue whether or not it was fun, but man, was that an achievement indeed. Today, though, teleport locations have decreased, the maps have shrunk, and ethereal gates are no longer in service. The last part is obviously because the zones are smaller, the ethereal gates are no longer necessary. And that also makes the achievement title obsolete. All etherites are attuned to through the main scenario, and most of the map as well. Maybe it's for the better? Let me know in the comments. And that was all we had time for today. Thank you so much for watching. You are awesome. Leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe if you haven't already. Let me know in the comments what you think about the topics in this video. Does the story of Falcon's Nest intrigue you? How bad Camp Rivers meet? Is it sad that Owl's Nest got placed in a PvP map? Did you get the achievement achievement? And how do you feel about the current teleport system? So much to talk about. I'll be back next week with another bubbling episode of Remnants of Around. See you then, Aorcians, and may you ever walk in the light of the crystal.